Hi, I'm Frankie Vu and this is Conquest TV. Welcome to your guide to issue 5 of your Warhammer 40,000 collection. What does this video have in store for you? Well, in issue 5 you'll learn about Space Marine Lieutenants, valiant heroes of the Adeptus Astartes, and you'll build and paint Lieutenant Calcius, the first hero for your growing Ultramarines army. We'll also take a look at how characters like Lieutenants work in your games, and the fantastic abilities they'll add to your forces. Let's dive in and take a closer look at Lieutenants. Space Marine Lieutenants are battlefield commanders, the right-hand men of indomitable company captains. They coordinate assaults on the enemy and inspire the Space Marines around them to fight harder. In your new background, you'll learn about how Lieutenants were added to the ranks of the Space Marines and their roles in different chapters. There's also a profile of Ultramarines Lieutenant Lucian Calcius, the hero whose model you'll be building and painting soon. Calcius's greatest victory was at the Battle of Nova Thulian. A horde of barbaric alien orcs attacked the vital agri-world which provides food to the worlds of Ultramar. Calcius not only led the Ultramarines in a successful defence of the planet, but personally struck down the green-skinned warboss Guttrek in heroic single combat. There's a full account of this epic clash for you to read. Finally, there's a focus on power weapons, deadly melee weapons used by the Space Marines. These swords, axes and more are wreathed in an energy field that can cut through even the thickest armour as if it's paper, making already mighty warriors even more deadly, especially to the likes of the Death Guard in their corrupted power armour. Lieutenant Calcius carries a power sword, making him a deadly combatant, as you'll find out soon. But first, let's take a look at building and painting. Lieutenant Calcius is a bit different from your other models. To assemble him, you're going to need to use plastic glue. If you subscribe to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, you may have got some plastic glue along with other handy tools as well. If not, you can pick up some at any Warhammer or Games Workshop store, or from the Games Workshop website. Plastic glue is a special glue that sticks plastic together with a very strong bond. Designed specifically for plastics like our models, it permanently welds the pieces together. It won't stick your fingers or non-plastics together. Even so, be careful when you're using it. Always use it in a well-ventilated room and be careful not to spill any, so make sure you've got some paper down to protect your work surface. Also, always put the lid back on the bottle when you're finished using it. This will keep it from drying out. You'll also have this mold line remover tool. The way plastic models are made can leave a very thin line of raised plastic around some of its surfaces, known as a mold line. This tool is perfect for getting rid of them. Since Lieutenant Calcius is going to be leading your Ultramarines into battle, you'll want him to look his very best. So let's remove the mold lines as we build it. First, let's look at the sprue for Lieutenant Calcius. He has more components than any other model we've done so far. 14 of them, including two choices for his head. One in a helmet and one without. You only need to use one of these, so decide if you want your Lieutenant Calcius to wear his helmet or to stride into battle bareheaded. It makes no difference in the game, so just go with whatever you think looks cooler. Let's start by clipping out the two halves of his body. These are numbered one and two on the sprue. So I'm gonna take my clippers and start with part number one. And then I'm gonna move on to part two. One, two, three, there we go. As you clip off each part, look for the mold lines that I talked about earlier. To get rid of them, Take your remover tool, place it at one end of the line and gently scrape down the line like this and there you go, it's gone. Once your first two parts are ready, remove the lid from your plastic glue. You'll see a long thin metal tube. This is an applicator that allows you to control precisely where your glue is going. It's especially useful with small parts like the purity seals that go on Lieutenant Calcius. You only need to use a very small amount of plastic glue when putting the model together. For each stage, put the parts together first to see where they touch and where you need a thin layer of glue. And you only need to put the glue on one side. These bits are highlighted in yellow in the assembly guide in issue 5. Going slowly and carefully, glue together Lieutenant Calcius. If you accidentally use too much glue, you can soak up the extra with a piece of tissue. And once you finish the rest of the model, don't forget to put the lid back on the glue so it doesn't dry out. Once Lieutenant Calcius is built, it's time to get painting. 
You'll find that painting Lieutenant Calcius is much like painting the intercessors and reavers from the previous videos, but his armour is more ornate and has additional details too. So let's use the guide in issue 5 to go through it step by step. Grab your brush and your water and assemble your paints. As with your other Space Marines, give Lieutenant Calcius a nice, thin, even coat of McCrag blue all over the model. Make sure not to miss any bits like the parts under his arms and the reverse of his sword. Remember to clean your brush regularly so that paint doesn't dry into the bristles. And when your base coat is done, leave it to dry. You'll know when it's done because the paint won't be shiny anymore and it should look like this. After thoroughly cleaning your brush and bringing it back to a point, it's time to paint the ribbed areas of Lieutenant Calcius' armour with Abaddon Black, along with other details like his pistol holster, pouches and scabbard. There's some ribbing at his neck as well. Now if you paint this black, it'll increase the contrast between his armour and his face when you paint that later. Now, you can paint his hair black now as well if you like, or you can leave that until after you've done his skin, just like in the magazine. Now once you've painted on Abaddon Black, it should look like this. This is a good time to change your water so that your metallic paints are using clean water that won't make them dull. Now like your other Space Marines, Lieutenant Calcius needs Retributor armour on his shoulder pad rims and the Aquila design on his chest as well. Now Calcius has the most intricate armour of any model we've done so far. There's also plenty of detail on his sword and scabbard to paint gold and an icon on his back. So check the guide in issue 5 to see exactly what to paint. Once you've added your Retributor armour, it'll look something like this. There are a few details on the model that will look great painted with Lead Belcher. The blade of his sword, the pistol handle, power pack vents and the rim around the Ultramarine symbol on the power pack. Adding Lead Belcher will give you this result. And now it's time to pick out a few details. Carefully paint Lieutenant Calcius' face with Bugman's Glow and remember to go back and paint his hair with Abaddon Black if you chose to wait earlier on. And uh, your result should look something like this. Lieutenant Calcius also has a few details your other Space Marines don't. His purity seals, the long pieces of parchment hanging from his belt and power pack are going to be painted in a future video when you have the right colours for them. What you can do now are the laurel wreaths on his left shoulder pad and leg. These are a symbol of his rank so that allies and enemies alike know that he's an honoured lieutenant and a warrior to be respected and feared. Paint these on with Death Guard Green to make them stand out against the blue of his armour. And that's Lieutenant Calcius finished and ready to lead your Ultramarines into battle against the Death Guard. The Warhammer 40,000 universe is filled with heroes. These might be bold leaders, powerful psychers, legendary champions or just mighty warriors whose example inspires those around them. These are known in the game as characters and they have awesome abilities and often different weapons to the troops they command. We're going to find out how to use characters in our games. Let's get started by setting up the new mission from issue 5, Command Deck Ambush. For this mission you'll need Lieutenant Calcius, of course, and your intercessors for the Ultramarines. Against them will be one unit of Plague Marines and the Pox Walkers. These Death Guard have managed to evade the Ultramarine strike teams defending the honour of Ultramar and are assaulting the command deck hoping to take out Lieutenant Calcius and seize control of the Ultramarine's ship. Grab your game mat, measuring rulers and dice and set up your warriors as shown in your magazine. The What You Will Need box will tell you how to decide who sets up first, how to deploy your units and who takes the first turn in each battle round. You can find the characteristics for your units in the magazine and as we learned in the last episode, don't forget about the disgustingly resilient and curse of the walking pox rules for the Death Guard. As you play this mission, you'll want to see how your new hero works. In a lot of ways, he's like your other units. He moves, shoots, charges and fights in the same way, but there are a number of differences. Remember how in the first video, each model acted independently? Characters do that all the time. They're never part of a unit. Lieutenant Calcius has different characteristics to the Intercessors and Reavers. Notably, he hits on 2 plus when he fights in close combat with his 4 attacks. 
He can also take a colossal five wounds before he's removed from the battle, as he shrugs off all but the most grievous injuries. He's armed with a power sword, an energy charged blade that is surrounded by a shimmering field that cuts through armor. Because of this, any Plague Marine Calcius wounds in close combat will need to roll a six for their armor to save the wound instead of a three plus. All his rules are listed on the data sheet in issue five, so you might want to keep that open as you play. The tactical precision ability is where Lieutenant Calcius really stands out. This is an ability that makes other Space Marines around him better in battle, as he uses his decades of experience to order them to target enemy weak points. Any friendly units that have a model within six inches of Lieutenant Calcius can re-roll any wounds roll of one that they make. If you roll another one, bad luck, you can't re-roll the dice a second time. This is known as an aura ability because it affects models all around him. To measure if a unit is in range of it, place your range ruler touching Lieutenant Calcius' base. If at least one model from a friendly unit has any part of its base within six inches, that whole unit gets the benefit. This ability always affects Lieutenant Calcius because he's always within six inches of himself. In this example, the unit will all get to re-roll ones to wound because one of them is within six inches of Lieutenant Calcius. Because characters like Calcius are single figures, it's difficult for enemies to target them in the midst of battle. They can be obscured by smoke or hidden behind other units. Because of this, a unit can only choose a character as the target of a shooting attack if that character is the closest visible enemy. Measure this if you aren't sure. In this example, the Plague Marines can't shoot Lieutenant Calcius because he's seven inches away. The Reavers are also visible and only five inches away. Characters really shine in the charge and fight phases. They have an extra ability called Heroic Intervention that allows them to jump in and fight when nearby friendly units get charged, counter-attacking with their powerful combat weapons to help save their comrades. At the end of the enemy charge phase, once the enemy has completed all their charges and moved their models, any of your characters that are within three inches of an enemy unit may use Heroic Intervention to move up to three inches as long as they end the move closer to the nearest enemy model. If they get within one inch, they'll be able to fight in the fight phase. This is especially useful with Lieutenant Calcius because of his four attacks and his power sword. If a unit of Plague Marines ventures too close with a charge, they'll be in serious trouble. Once you've got the hang of the rules for characters, it's time to put Lieutenant Calcius to the test once again in the second mission from issue five, Ambush. Can the heroic Space Marine Lieutenant survive for five full battle rounds? That's five Death Guard turns and five Ultramarines turns. Or will the Plague Marines and Poxwalkers manage to bring down this hero of Ultramar? It's up to you to decide. In this replay mission, if the unit of Poxwalkers is completely destroyed, it can come back onto the table. So the Ultramarines can't just kill all their enemies and be safe. Remember, as well as that, if the Plague Marines want to shoot at Lieutenant Calcius, he has to be the closest model. For a real challenge, you can add in additional rules for the Plague Champion's Power Fist and the Ultramarine's Bolt Pistols. You can find these in the Extra Rules section of Issue 5. Now, that Power Fist is devastating. With it, Repugnus is a deadly threat to Calcius. Now you know how to use heroes in your games, and there'll be plenty more of them coming later in the Warhammer 40,000 Conquest collection. But for now, get in some more practice with Lieutenant Calcius, and I'll see you soon for our next video, where we'll be looking again at how squads fight together and adding more Plague Marines to your Death Guard. They're going to need reinforcements to deal with Calcius after all. See you then.